So how about we uh, just confirm a bit more about the notebook tool, you know, what, what other things it can do. Well, a good thing you might want to do is under the file, you'll see download as. You can download it as uh, various things, including the sort of reveal slides and stuff as a PDF um, and the like. But you're more inclined, you're, you're more likely to download as raw Python or as a Python notebook. So IPYNB. And, uh, and, that, and that can be loaded into ArcGIS um, Pro, for example, um, or Notebook Server and the like, and the Python just, well, into uh, like Idle or something. So that's, that's how you get it off from ArcGIS Online. You go to the Download As and, and pick, pick it off. It's quite um, that's a, a, a key thing you'll need. So let me um, uh, just show you the tasks so let's say let's say you want to do this whatever we've done here check on users how old how old the, you know when the last login and that stuff is uh, etc and you want to kind of run that every week you'll see that you've actually got at the top here a tasks button so you click on tasks create task title check user last login I mean you do a bit more in that Python to be quite honest you know maybe just report back you know, in text, last login 30 days ago or whatever. Uh, you can pass parameters at the time of uh, runtime and etc. But we're just going to run the code. And you can see here, you can say, well, when are you going to start this? I'm going to start it on uh, that date. Uh, it's going to be repeated every minute or whatever. Let's say it's every week and it's every Friday. OK, and it starts on a Friday at um, midnight. And for the time bit, well, no, yeah, at the time being, it, it never ends. But you can see we could do it 10 times or, you know, four times for the next month or, or um, set an actual date. Update notebook on completion. So that's where you actually get details of um, the execution and the running uh, back to um, uh, back to the notebook. And you'll see it saved as part of the notebook. You'll, you'll get all the details of, of the what happened during the execution, that sort of thing. Like a geoprocessing task, you know, a bit of, bit of that sort of, you know, last run, successful, that sort of thing. You can also set a maximum time that the task can run. So if you set something bit bit monstrous, some real, you know, I don't know, some kind of data cube analysis or something, then maybe that will take a, a while to run. So you might want to set a, uh, a value in minutes to say, look, you know, if it runs more than six hours, time out. Because if it is advanced, you are being charged per minute for runtime. So that's for the advanced ones, not you know for the advanced ones. So it's quite high for the standard ones. Yes, you still get charged, but but it's but it's a minimal um, sort of amount. And I'll put those uh, details in the description as well. So that's tasks. So actually, did I? Um, I don't think I pressed OK, did I? So let's just do test. And Fifteen minutes, fine, whatever. I did cancel, didn't I? So so when you created your task, it'll appear in this sort of box and you can click on the name um, and it and when you do that there are no details because it has not executed yet if it had executed it would come up with successfully run on this date whatever that sort of thing and on these three dots you can delete it and you can pause go back into edit or find the details as before so you can pause it and it will set to pause if you do it it'll say pause um, but actually I am gonna delete and now it's gone so that's how you it's very it's pretty good you know to make a task very very powerful to have Python running at a, a you know a specific times and repeated at the back end in ArcGIS Online or indeed on your own ArcGIS server where you got um, Notebook Server um, and a portal etc. So it's all um, um, very very powerful. But let's let's get into a bit of geometry. So in this geometry, we're going to use make use of a new item that I'm going to create. So I'm just going to create a feature layer. I'm going to create a polygon layer. Let's call it my buffer, and it's a polygon. Uh, we're not doing any GPS and Zs and stuff. Uh, my buffer, do we got demo in there? So we just created this my buffer polygon. Yeah, it's actually going to be called my buffer as well, the feature service, I guess. Well, it will be. So it's creating the feature layer because I want a feature layer in order to store results geometry results from my Python. It's going to be pretty simple, straightforward, but it will certainly get you started with, with um, how, how you then proceed and do more complicated, 
complicated things. So here we go. So we've got it. Let's go back into the demo notebook. Um, and what we'll do is, uh, what I want to do is, is, is access that feature service, this feature service. I want to access this. Um, I want to create a bit of JSON within Python x y for a tree location let's say it's a tree and then i want to draw a buffer around that tree of x meters and store that buffer in here that's what's going to go in into this feature service so it's going to be a circle and then display that circle and also bring it into arcgis online so and all of that actually is quite straightforward once in a while, of course but that's the point i'm going to show you how to do that so the first thing um we want to grab um i'm going to um, again, pick up the buffer feature layer. Now, you, you could kind of work your way through, iterate through in a, in a loop, uh, all the items for a particular user, uh, your, your content items, but and, and that's fine, but actually I know precisely the ID of what I'm going to write to, and it's that. So I'm going to copy that. So it says ID equals. That's the bit you want to copy when you're looking at the service where you want the, you see it's my buffer. So I want it, that is the actual hosted feature service I want to gain access to. So I put that in there. So now that buffer FL contains all the details of my feature service. So if I actually just print buffer F feature layer, you see, click on the start on the Excel click, you see how it looks. You see, it's it's got it's a layer collection there's, there's one layer and it's only just going out it's fine that's great that's successful so but the actual layer we're writing to as we are we're accessing the service is, is layer zero um, you can see that because if we click on see feature service and not just online buffer my buffer is, is zero I quite clearly see it shows that if I click on my buffer it is zero with with that ID but this is ID zero for this layer within this service and there is all my details actually I'm gonna make a slight change here I'm gonna go back to this go to my buffer I just want to add a field I want to add a field because I, I want to, when I update my buffer and draw geometry I want to add a field as well so I go to data so this will be empty Go to fields, add. Let's call it. Um, let's call it my my ref. Yeah. Reference is the display field. We say don't need all that. Let's just say twenty. Add new field. So we've added a string field uh, called reference. Uh, the field name, sorry, is called my ref, but display or alias is is reference to that table, uh, which is, as you can see, empty at the moment. So, um, so what we do here is we, we identify, we lock onto this variable buffer layer equals the buffer feature layer, um, feature service, dot layers, zero. So I'm accessing layers from that ID, from that hosted feature service, but it's actually just zero. That's the only one I want. So now if we do a print buffer layer, I'm just putting the print in so you can see what it actually contains. And now you can see how it contains the full rest endpoint. That's what it that's what it's inserted into there. So we've got a nice definition there of that um, of that right to that layer called my buffer. Let's get rid of the print for the moment. So we've got all those details. What next? Well, let's set a tree object sort of X and a tree ob object um, Y as my coordinates on my tree. Won't do anything if I just run, off it goes. And as we saw before, we can just take this and start, you know, build things into, you know, we don't need to break these all into cells. It's great to do as a cells because it's a great, um, you know, testing and really good for step-by-step -step analysis. It's all great, but you actually, probably want to bundle some things together um, and but that's however you wish you know it's you, you work how you, how you 
want to work with this. So I've set the coordinates uh, to these two variables, tree object, object x and y. They're evidently um, x and y coordinates. It's British National Grid. They're six digits. They're meters. They're in meters. So because it's it's two double seven double zero, which is is the British National Grid um, uh, WKID. Um, that's what's going on here. So the the SRIV. Now. Another thing is we're going to draw a buffer around the tree. So let's actually set a variable and say 30, which is 30 meters. Let's also set um, the myref variable, say, um, uh, yeah, test by Doug. All right, because I want to put an attribute in here. I want to populate this field, myref. So that's going to be um, my text field, which could be absolutely anything. I'm just hard coding it just to show you. But you know, we could pick up feature by feature. We could have input, whatever. Now we've got that. Um, we could run all of that. Let's run, and it goes straight away. It's, it's just signing some. It's just populations and variables. Not really doing much. It goes straight in. So now we're in in this next cell down here. We can say we can, let's create the tree object. In Python, so tree opt is a point. Now let's go back up here and see the import. See, we got we use gis, which is the standard one. It's what you always have, and we use date time because we wanted to do all this stuff down here with the date and time. Right. So just think about that for a second. So now I've got tree opt, uh, point object, and then you have all the JSON that describes it. It's a point, so you must have the reserve keyword X and Y and spatial reference. You you need all three. If it's failing, you've probably missed off spatial reference. So the WKID is two dollar seven zero zero, which is British National Grid. Now we run it and see what happens. It gets an error. Again, it's like the error before. Now we're using point geometry. So what we've got to do is bring in the point module from ArcGIS Geometry. So I'll paste that in there. So from ArcGIS.Geometry, import point. Now, if you're working with polygons and polylines, etc., you, you, you know you, you just tack them onto the end and, and bring the end. I'm not, so I'm not going to waste memory by importing them or referencing them. Um, I'm only using point, but you would add the other geometry types um, as needed. But that does mean we still can't, just like before, we can't just run this, this will error. We need to go back up here and and run it or do a uh, cell and run all. And just run it all. It doesn't matter, it prints out some interesting stuff. So all the hellos worked and, and it's gone all the way through and tree obj point is now working. Brilliant. So we've got that, but how about creating the buffer? The buffer, so again, the variable, create a buffer. Uh, you can just do this uh, dot buffer um, call um, on the tree ob object. See, so we've created this object now, this tree. In fact, if we um, just print tree ob, oh, need that in brackets, need in brackets, he says, I think. Uh, oh. See, it just contains what this was defined as in JSON anyway. So, but it's an object, it's a valid object. So create a buffer equals that valid object uh, dot buffer and the, and the variable you want to, um, sorry, the parameter you want to pass in there is distance equals and then whatever you want. And, and it's buffer distance, which is 30. So I want to create a 30 meter buffer around the X, Y. Okay, let's run it. Happens pretty much instantly and off it goes. One thing you you, you should do almost as a matter of uh, sort of good practice is to force spatial reference and just make sure it's correct. We're dealing with two double seven zero zero all the way through. You may be dealing with four three two six lat and long. So you need to you, you know you've projected or you know system your coordinates you, you need to make sure they're all aligned. So it's good practice to say okay I've created this buffer and then sort of just make sure it's 2700, you know, it's in the right WKID. 
So that's what I put that in for. I enforce that that WKID to make sure it is deafening, sort of BNG. Okay, now we're going to populate. We're going to populate using a dictionary. Um, I could paste these all these into one block really, but I'm splitting them up just just so you can see. So I'm creating this dictionary. I'm using that to write the feature set. Um, which is one way. I mean, there are there are other ways, but I'm just using this. So what you do is you define in this JSON construct um, the attributes first. What are the attributes you're writing? Well, it's this my ref one, which is my ref. You see, so test by Doug will go in there, and then you you sort of close that off and, and put a comma, and then after the comma is a geometry, uh, and then that colon separates the um, values. So the colon and then the value, which is the geometry created buffer close curly brackets and then once you've set what your dictionary is uh, your contents of what you want to write like I said there's a few other ways to do that and I'll probably cover that in other videos but just go with the dictionary for the moment and um, works perfectly fine it's a good way to, to work um, and then I'm going to set an uh, add result um, uh, value here I'm going to pick this off whether it's successful or not um, which is on um, the buffer layer so that's back here. So that's that layer zero, which is my buffer. And then edit features is the um, uh, call that, that we're going to make, um, which is uh, parameters expected are like update and um, delete and um, other stuff, can't remember. Um, and uh, an add, sorry, add of course. So I'm using an ads. And then you, you put in there the dictionary you want to you um, write to that table. So these two go hand in hand. Define what's going to be written, and then write it. Um, and then I think I think a zero is success. But you know, let's just print a result. So let's click on this. There we go. So yeah, sorry. Okay. So it's success. There we go. Uh, it's true. Success is set to true. So that means that in here, if I go back to table, there should be a record. There you go, test by Doug. That's my reference. Okay, so is it is it real? I mean, is it a good thing? Let's go to visualization. So I click on visualization in ArcGIS Online. There's my buffer. Let's just look at the property, uh, the table. So I've selected the record, test by Doug, which is what I wrote, and then hit the zoom selection. And there it is, my 30 meter buffer at uh, that location in the feature service. So let's just go back to the data and you can see it there. So back in here, so do make sure you have forced the spatial reference. I, I can't reiterate that enough. Um, uh, if you did want to see what the created buffer looks like, you can actually just print created buffer. Just run. And you can see the rings are defined there, and you can see all your data. So, and and indeed, the WKID is correct, you see. It's got it's got that at the end. So it's definitely it's definitely worth doing that just to double check. So, like I said, it's all good for testing and analysis, and then you can sort of put everything together and you have your final um, sort of production ready um, script so but do you do you have to go I mean we went to here we went to visualization stuff do you have to do all that it don't actually because you can see it all within the notebook within this Python uh, environment because I could say that my map equals GIS and then dot map is what you want and we can define the dot map as Leicester I know it's Leicester so I'm just going to put Leicester I could do USA or Canada whatever I'm, I'm just going to say uh, Leicester there and then my map um, dot add layer um, dot add layer and then it's the oh, buffer layer so because the buffer layer is that back up here is that um, where was it it's here isn't it so buffer layer equals this feature service with the layer zero. So that's what I'm talking about here. So it's just add that layer. 
and then that that won't do much at, a, at all I mean if we just run that it'll just populate those um, variables there we go so it has a little star it's running and it's done so that was 39 that's a 39 process I've run um, but you can just do display my map and then run that we could do it all together obviously and look what you end up with so it's gone to um, Leicester and it's displayed the map at this default zoom probably maybe it's setting extend by urban sprawl something like that you can see a little splodge over there um, looks suspiciously like yeah it is um, and by the way just on this you, you see you got this little icon here if you swap it if you click on it it actually goes to like a scene mode so if you're, if you're dealing with 3d data you can just hold the right mouse button down and see so this has got the default topographic map here there's not that many hills on the immediate surrounding of uh, Leicester but by holding right hand mouse click you can um, get your sort of 3d um, scene type view uh, so that's what that button does if I click it again it'll go back to 2d and off off we go but notice when I did that it actually kind of it was quite far zoomed out wasn't it but but you know we could we could go back to this and because we know, I mean, we know coordinates, we know all kinds of stuff. So, I oh know the postcode, oh, eventually. So, LE3, remember the postcode to my office, and I can pass it a postcode, you see. So, this, this GIS.map um, setting, which is what's been imported up here, GIS is set to home by default, which is the default sort of value for, for GIS. Um, so, that's your, your workspace. Um, but now I'm saying that um, as far as the dot map's concerned, as far as the map's concerned, center it on that and zoom in. So now when I run this, but now you can see that within this, it's brought it straight in. And, um, and, and um, you know, focused on that map, um, exactly what we're talking about. So, so there we have um, a, a pretty, I hope, a, a good overview of Notebook and a bit of detail about Python and geometry. Uh, that, that um, you'll find it useful. Uh, find useful. If I just go to ArcGIS Pro at the end here, um, I'm logged into my portal, so I could. Um, but I could immediately see I'm in the catalog pane here. So under View, just click back Catalog Pane if you haven't got it open. I can right hand mouse click and say New Notebook. See. And so I can within ArcGIS Pro have this have this whole thing running. I can also, uh, and you see how this is the first notebook in this project, so it's actually put a, a sort of folder up there, a header. But I can um, say, uh, actually, if I sorry, if I get a portal, go to Sandpit, I've got the demo notebook which I've just been working on, and I can download. So I can download. Um, let's see, it, it'll give it a unique. Um, sort of name which which is which is fine I'll just copy the um, folder it's going to save I should have called it something a bit more user friendly really but anyway that's downloaded so in the project and notebooks I can now add a notebook which is that one I've just downloaded which is a convoluted name which like I said I should change really and then just open in ArcGIS Pro and there we have it we have have our um, um, notebook. So anyway, I hope you um, find that useful, and uh, I'll probably do a bit more on um, not necessarily notebook as such, but probably on um, uh, Python, and just show you a few more sort of uh, tricks, um, hints, and tips. But I hope you find uh, all of that useful. Thank you.